Welcome to this Nomad tutorial. I'm Marco Scheidgen and this time we are looking at the Nomad search interface and how you can find interesting datasets. Let's say you want to identify data that's related to your work, or you want to find data of a specific colleague, or you need to find a dataset that's interesting for your analysis. We are going to look at Nomad's metadata and how Nomad uses metadata, how to use its interactive visualization and its autocomplete search bar to filter Nomad's data down based on metadata. Okay, metadata. I say that a lot, but why is it important? See, Nomad is fundamentally different than other search pages. We are not going to search for certain terms in a bunch of text files. We are rather filtering or better selecting entries by certain criteria. If you want to compare Nomad to other search engines, you should think of an online shop where you filter products based on category, size, color, features. The data items that we use to form these criteria are called metadata. The word means data about data and in search terms, the data that we use to search other data. This can be very advantageous for specialized databases like Nomad because we can be very specific about our criteria. We call this domain-aware search, where we really allow you to have a material science-specific search interface. As an experiment, you can try to hop over to Google Data Search, a text-based search engine, and try to find density of states data from DFT calculation on titanium oxides that were performed with a certain function. It's a very interesting experience. Let's try this very search as our first example for Nomad. If you open the Nomad repository and archive, you get this search page here. As usual for material science databases, you are first confronted with the periodic table. And this represents our first set of metadata, the chemistry or elements of our calculations. So now I start to select titanium and oxygen. And as you see, Nomad starts to filter down our data. I went from the 10 million plus calculations down to uh, 15,000 entries left. If you want to exclusively search for results with titanium and oxide in them, you can use this button here. And now we are only searching for compounds that contain oxygen and titanium and nothing else. Um, and you see there's a smaller number um, of remaining results here. Okay, until now we were just looking at the chemistry, but we have other metadata as well. If you look above the search bar, we have multiple tabs here that you can also use. For example, metadata on the system, like the system type, the symmetry, how many elements are in the compound, some Rust classification. We have the method tab here, which shows you the codes that were used to perform the calculations, the functionals, the basis sets. We have the properties tab, which shows you all the properties that are in a calculation. So if you want to filter based on certain properties that you need the calculations to have, you can use this here. We also have some classification based on properties here. And then we have the uploads tab, which shows you when something was uploaded and by whom or from which database we have the data. So now go, let's go back to our example. We wanted to search for calculations that have a density of states in it. So I go to the properties tab and now I select electronic density of states because this is a property that I want my results to have. So I basically now filtered it down to 3.5 uh, remaining calculations. Another thing that we wanted to look at was the functional. So let's say we go to the method tab and uh, let's say, okay, I want to have a DFT code. So I select VAS for example, and now I want to look at the functional. Um, our functional visualization only gives me a very rough uh, classification here. So I could uh, only select GGA, which is also the only option there. So let's say uh, I want to look for a more specific uh, functional here. Um, unfortunately, we cannot really put all the functional names down in the visualization. So we need a different means to search for that. And for this, we have the search bar. Now, if I click into the search bar, I get a list of suggestions for all the possible properties that I can search for, all the metadata that's available for search, and this is quite a lot. Now, if I start typing, because I'm looking for um, the functional name, I start typing functional, and indeed I find a property that's called XC functional names. If I click on it, I get another list of suggestions. And based on the remaining calculations, um, remaining in terms of the selected criteria that I have, uh, I get these options. So these are all the remaining functional names in the set of results that I have. And these names come from the libxc and yeah, now I can basically select one of them. What you see here, or what might be particular is that I have the exchange and the correlation uh, functionals. They are listed below each other. Of course, probably 
uh, one calculation has attached multiple of these values to it. And this is something that can happen. For some things, the elements are another example. One calculation can have multiple values. So let's say I select uh, this one here. Um, and now let's, let's hop back to the elements where we still have to select titanium and, and, and oxide. Um, and this is the same thing, right? I can use the search bar, for example, and say atoms. Um, and then this will give me all the element names that I left. So I wanted titanium. And if I want to choose another name as well, uh, I can just do this again. Uh, and yeah, let's type oxygen uh, and choose uh, oxygen here. Another powerful feature of the search bar is the optimate query language. So instead of using these visualizations and our, our criteria here, um, you can click this button and switch between the normal search and the optimate search. And optimate, which is an API, an open API standard, you will find a link in the description, um, offers a filter language that you can use to ask more complex queries. So let's say I'm still interested in titanium oxide, so I want to say something like elements has titanium in it. So this will basically give me a filter um, for titanium, uh, or I want to have titanium and oxygen in it. Um, and I have to be sure about the syntax. Now I have to say uh, element has all. So um, they are all in the set of elements. I can also say uh, has only, for example, if I want to have the exclusive search. Let's say I still have all. Uh, and one thing about the optimal filter language now is that I can combine criteria with logical operators. And for example, I can say, okay, I want this and I also want the number of elements to be bigger than three to get uh, compounds that also contain The problem with the optimal filter language is that, of course, you have to know the syntax and have to know what you are doing. Um, so we will often get error messages and then you have to correct stuff. Let's say I want to have all the compounds with titanium and oxide in them that have more than three and less than, I don't know, six elements. And if I go back to the nomad search, this criteria uh, will be added um, to my list of criteria. Okay, now that we have some idea about how to select search criteria, let's look at the search results and what features the interface has there. So this is the, the list of results, at least the first entries um, of the remaining results. You see how many entries there are. Uh, and then you are presented with this table here, which shows you some basic metadata about all these, these entries. You can customize the columns um, when you click this button here uh, and select different metadata. Uh, to show, uh, for example, instead of, I don't know, instead of the functionals, I want to see the basis sets, um, then you get the basis set information here. You can click off each of the entries uh, to get an overview about all the metadata that's in there. We have the metadata that we extracted from the calculations over here. We have user metadata like comments, references, the authors, uh, the data sets that the entries are assigned to here and some metadata about the various IDs, main file, and so on and so forth. Um, this is not the only table that we have. You see the tabs over here. So this is basically all the entries um, that fulfill our search criteria. We can also click the materials tab to get a list of all the materials that fulfill the criteria and how many calculations each of we have for each of these materials. We have this grouped entries tab here, which uh, groups entries that have the same metadata so that we can like see uh, similar calculations at once. And we have the data sets tab, which shows us all the data sets that the entries in the resulting set are part of. In addition to these tabs, we have this row here where we can select, um, where we can select calculations. Let's say I select three of them. Then we get offered this download button here where we can now select if we want to download all the raw files, if we don't want to download the, the archive files. Um, you can also uh, select all entries, and this will not just give you the entries in this uh, in this table here. It will you gi give you really all the entries, so all, you can download all the four thousand five hundred uh, calculations. You get a big zip file. And one last thing that I want to show you is you have this button over here, 
um, which shows you little snippets of shell commands and API and Python code uh, and stuff like this. And we will look in a separate API tutorial on how to use uh, this to actually access the data in Nomad programmatically. Another thing is that you can sort um, the data based on the metadata. So all the columns that have this little icon in here are sortable. So for example, you can sort the results by the used by the formula or by the used code um, and so on and so forth. One last feature that I want to show you is the metrics that are used in these uh, visualizations here. So at the moment we selected entries. So all the numbers that we see here are basically the numbers of entries that fulfill our criteria. And we can change this. For example, I can change it from entries to single configuration calculations. And now we see the numbers are different. So now we are looking at the number of individual total energy calculations that our um, DFT calculations contain, for example. Or I can select this to the number of materials that fulfill our criteria or the number of data sets with elements that fulfill our criteria within the data sets. NOMAD is originally designed for computational material science, but we are developing the idea to support other domains of material science as well. This is uh, still very early and only incomplete and experimentary data has been added at the moment. But you can have a brief look. This pull down here allows you to access the other domains that we have, for example, experimental material science data. Everything that we have discussed so far about the search can also be applied to your data. If you go to your data, and if you have logged into Nomad, and if you have provided data in the past, you get an overview about your data. So this is just my data, all my uploads, um, the data sets that I've created. I get a list of all the entries um, that I've uploaded. I can use all the tabs to get an overview based on the metadata of my data. Um, what are the elements in my systems? Um, what is the system information? What properties have I calculated? When have I uploaded something? And you can think of this as a variable management tool to manage your own data. Also check our tutorial on how to upload data to Nomad. Finally, let's have a brief look at uh, some of the results. So if I go down to the list, I can click this button to get to the entry page, which shows me um, an individual entry. So I get the metadata again. I get all the raw files for download or for preview here. Um, and I can also look at the archive. And this is what we want to do now. This is what we call the Nomad archive, a structured approach to represent all the extracted uh, information. In this particular example, we performed the geometry optimization. This is covered in this section workflow here. I can go to the final result uh, calculation. I can go to the system that was computed. Uh, I can see uh, the density of states data that was um, calculated and much more. Look out for future tutorials on the Nomad archive. We also have another tutorial on how to use the normal processing locally on your computer to compute the structured view for your data locally. Also look out for upcoming normal tutorials and webinars uh, on how to visualize all data in the normal encyclopedia or how to use the artificial intelligence toolkit to access and analyze data in ready to use Jupyter notebooks. Okay, we covered many aspects about the normal search. You learned how to effectively use metadata, create filter and to find meaningful data sets. If you think there's a search feature missing in Nomad, please let us know. Thank you very much.